Today I'm going to show you how I make raspberries non-destructively in Blender using geometry nodes. Just a note, in this video I'm using the 3.0 experimental version. I like this method because the detail level scales depending on the amount of time invested. This method can be used for close-in shots or in others where you don't need such fine detail. I also really wanted to experiment using geometry nodes. Let's start by decomposing the raspberry into parts. First, we see that a raspberry is made up of many individual spears called fruitlets. Each fruitlet has a style, which is a remnant of the flower's pistil. Each fruitlet is also covered with tiny hairs. It's important to note that a fruitlet isn't a perfect sphere and has this crevice going down the middle. A raspberry is basically fruitlets distributed along the face of an egg-like shaped object. Of course, raspberries have a hole at the top. This is where the stem would be, but I'll leave the stem and the leaves for another video. With geometry nodes, I think it's important to plan out what we're going to build, so let's start with an overview on how we're going to build our raspberry. First, we're going to create a bunch of hair objects and group them into a collection. These will be used in each of our fruitlets. Second, we're going to create a few styles, which have different shapes and sizes. Third, we're going to create our fruitlet base object, which has some surface displacement. We'll construct a few of them, but with slightly different displacement values so they don't all look the same. We are doing this because we need some diversity in fruitlets when we compose our final raspberry object. If we simply use one fruitlet, it doesn't look right. Fourth, we'll create our final fruitlet object, pairing each fruitlet with a style and adding hair, all using geometry nodes. For each fruitlet object, we'll use one of the styles. The fruitlets will be grouped into their own collection. And finally, we'll be constructing the final raspberry object using the collection of fruitlets. We'll be defining the overall shape using a base mesh and adjusting the different attribute values available on the geometry node tree to get different raspberry shapes. So let's get started. The dimensions I give in this video are just a rough guide. You'll have to tweak them slightly based on the size and shape of the raspberries you make. Start by creating the styles. Create a cube with sides roughly 0.075 millimeters in length. In edge select mode, move the top vertices so that the rectangle has a height of 3.83 millimeters. We just need the rough shape, we can adjust the scale later. Add a subsurface modifier at level 2. This effectively rounds the harsh edges of the rectangle. But we need to add two loop cuts, one at the top and one at the bottom to maintain the rectangle shape. Now add a few more loop cuts, you need enough to create the natural bends in the stock. Select a few of the uppermost edges and scale upwards on everything but the z-axis. This will create the nub at the tip. Apply smooth shading when you're done. Now we want to mark the edges, one going down, one for the face at the bottom, and then again at the top. This sums up the basic shape. The next step is to create the bends in the stalk. Now we're going to be creating the bends in the style, but we can't repeat the same bends for each fruitlet, so we'll create a few more styles by duplicating the original mesh. To create the bends, within edit mode, with x-ray turned on, select some vertices with proportional mode on. Start to rotate and move the vertices to create the bends in the style's stock. Do this with the other duplicate styles. That's pretty much it for the style mesh. In this example, I'll show you how to use simple vertex coloring to paint your mesh. I'll provide this material online. It's quite simple and simply blends two materials together using a factor based on vertex coloring. Since we also UV unwrap the object, you can also apply your own textures if you want. With the style mesh selected, create a new vertex color group. Name it tip. Select vertex paint mode and paint the tip of the mesh black. When you assign the material, the black painted portion displays a dark brown texture with the stem remaining yellow. Now off to making the small hairs. The exact hair size isn't as important as we'll be tweaking it later. I find you'll modify the hair sizes quite often based on the specifics of the scene so I'm giving rough measurements. The small hairs are really simple as they are basically a thin rectangle. Create a small cube with sides of 0.004mm. Now stretch it out by moving the top vertices to make a rectangle that's about 0.2mm tall. Add a subsurface modifier, set it to level 2. As before, create two loop cuts to reform the rectangle, apply smooth shading. Scale inwards the top of the hair to create a pointed tip. Now we're ready to start bending the hair like we did with the styles. Create a bunch of loop cuts and start moving and rotating the mesh around the loops to create the bends. 
I recommend having at least three hair shapes, which will associate with three fruit buds. The hair material is basically a grayish solid color. That's basically it. For the fruitlet, create a sphere with a diameter of 3.4 millimeters. Apply smooth shading. Rotate the sphere 90 degrees so that the poles are aligned with either the X or the Y axis. To create the crevice that runs down the fruitlet, first, create a few more loop cuts so the crevice isn't so wide. Select some edges in the middle of the sphere between the loop cuts we've just created. Don't select the entire loop, but just a few edges. Start from the pole and select about half of the edges down until you're around the equator. With the edges selected, decrease their position slightly. Once the fruitlet is included on the raspberry as a whole, we can adjust their depth later. To UV unwrap this mesh, create a seam going down the middle on the back side of the fruitlet. Fruitlets are not perfect spheres. We need to distort their shape slightly. To do this, add a displace modifier. Create a new texture and name it fruitlet. Set the strength to 0.0002 and in the texture tab, Choose clouds as a texture and set the size to be 0.0025. On the raspberry, we only want the outward faces to have hair. There's no point in generating hair on the inside faces of the mesh. To do this, we want to put the outward faces, or in the current orientation of the fruitlet, the top faces, in a vertex group. In edit mode, while looking down on the mesh, select only the top faces. Create a new vertex group called hair and assign the selected faces. We'll use this in our point distribute node later on. To finish off the basic shape, we can add the fruitlet material. I've included a link to the fruitlet material in the description box below. Now we're off to using geometry nodes to create the finished individual fruitlet, which we'll use when we compose the final raspberry. The material is tricky, and I find I have to adjust the color and subsurface to suit the specific lighting in the scene. The individual fruitlets on a raspberry need to have some diversity of color. If the fruitlets all have the same color, it doesn't look right. So this material will generate a random number and based on its value, we'll adjust the base color of the material slightly to create four different variations of colors on the fruitlet when instanced on the raspberry. And with that, let's start by creating the fruitlet geometry node tree. Click on our fruitlet base mesh and under the geometry nodes tab, click new. We need a join node because we already know we're going to be combining our hair instance, our style instance, and our base mesh. Link the input with the join node. Now we're going to be instancing our style mesh first. While we're going to use the point instance node to create an instance of the style, we only want one. We can do this by creating a mesh line node with a single count. This basically gives us a single point. When we link everything together, we can see it's not in the right location. So we'll have to adjust its X, Y, and Z position along with rotation. We can adjust the position by adding an attribute vector math node and inserting it between the mesh line node and point instance node. Make the option set to add and this allows us to offset the style's X, Y, Z positions until it's in the right location. We want the style to be pointing downward slightly so we can create a point rotate node and add it right after the vector math node. Now adjust the rotation values until we get it in the right angle. Remember, once we compile the final Raspberry object, we can come back and adjust these values. For the hair, we want to create a point distribute node. Because the object is small, we need the density max to be pretty high. Set the density attribute the hair. This makes the node only generate points on the mesh where we mark them with the hair vertex group. We can adjust the hair length by creating an attribute fill node and specifying the scale attribute. Let's start with a value of 1.5 for now. But we'll adjust this as needed to suit our scene. To add some variation of hair sizes, we can add an attribute randomized node. Put a value from 0.5 to 1 for now, but again, we'll adjust this later on. Finally, we can create the instances using the point instance node. Select the hair collection and make sure the whole collection option is turned off. Once we join everything up, we can see the final output. So remember how we created three different styles to be used in three fruitlets? To do this, we need a way to specify the specific style instance to our geometry nodes. We can achieve this by exposing our style instance as an input. Because the position and rotation adjustments are specific to the style instance, we also have to expose them as an input as well. Once we've linked everything up, let's name our inputs by pressing N while the geometry node tab is active. Now on the modifiers tab, we can see the geometry node modifier along with the three inputs we've exposed. Before we create the two additional fruitlet instances, Recall that the fruitlet base mesh are not perfect spheres. We applied some surface displacement. 
So we'll need to modify these values slightly after duplicating them. To add a bit more realism, we can stretch the fruitlet so it's more egg shaped. Remember, we rotated the sphere, so while our intention is to make the fruitlet taller, right now we're stretching it along either the x or y axis. Apply rotation and scale afterwards. Duplicate the original fruitlet mesh by clicking Shift plus D. Do this twice to create two copies. For each copy, modify the displacement slightly by tweaking their strengths. Remember, we only want a very slight displacement effect. For the second fruit that created, change its style instance reference in the geometry node input to use style number 2. Because it's a different style object, we have to adjust the XYZ positions and rotations until we get it into the right location. Do the same for the third, but refer to the third style instance. Finally, group the three fruitlets into their own collection, and call it fruitlets. The next step is using the fruitlets in creating an actual raspberry object. Create a sphere that's about 8.3 millimeters. Add a subdivision modifier with level 2, and apply smooth shading. Raspberries are not perfect spheres, but more like eggs shaped, so stretch the sphere along the z-axis to create the desired shape. Apply rotation and scale afterwards. Now we're off to using geometry nodes to convert this base mesh into a raspberry. Start by creating a point distribute node and choose Poisson disk as a distribution method. Create the point instance node, choose collection, uncheck hole, and choose the fruitlet collection. You won't see anything show up yet. This is because the density is too low and because we're using such small scales. We have to use a large number. Once we fill the distance minimum and density values, you should see something like this. It's still looking a bit weird. The first thing you might have noticed is that there's no hole at the top and the fruitlets kind of look squished together. To make the hole at the top, we need to supply an attribute to the point distributes density input such that no points are created at the top of our base mesh. We'll refer to this new attribute as density. We basically need a function to set the density attribute to 1 when the value is under a specific z value and 0 otherwise. This will stop the point distribute node to create points above a specific height, which is what we want. There are many ways to do this, but I really wanted a way local to the base mesh, as opposed to using global positions. To do this, we basically need to get a point that's relative to our base mesh, for which we can then add or remove some offset amount to get the exact height value we want. One way is to use the input's geometry bounding box. But first, remember how we changed the orientation of the fruitlet base sphere? If after you've instanced the fruitlets on your main raspberry object and you see that the fruitlets are not pointed in the right direction, you can do one of two things. First, you can rotate the fruitlet object and apply rotation and scale until they appear properly oriented when instanced using geometry nodes. Or, you can add a point rotate node between the point distribute and scale randomized nodes, and with rotation type set to Euler and using point space, rotate the x, y, and z axis until the fruitlets are facing the right direction. And that's what we tried to do when we initially rotated the base sphere and created the fruitlet facing upwards. This is so that it would be facing the right direction when instanced. Now back to creating the hole at the top. Create a bounding box node and link the min output to a separate XYZ node. This isolates just the Z value and is relative to our base mesh. We can then add an offset value using a math node. Let's call this point the height limit. Set the second value or offset to be zero for now. We need to compare every point on the input geometry with the height limit and set the density attribute to 1 if it's below it or 0 otherwise. To do this, we need to separate out the z position out of each point. We can do this by creating a separate xyz node and break up the position attribute into separate xyz attributes. Now with an attribute compare node with the option set to less than, we can set the density attribute to 1 if the z position is less than the height limit and zero otherwise. To get this all working, we have to specify an offset. Try 0.007 as a start. As we modify the offset amount, we can see the height of the fruit that travels up and down the base mesh, and that's what we want. For the second problem, we want the ability to stretch out the raspberry vertically. While we can get some elongation by stretching the base mesh, we get a finer grain control by using an attribute mix node and multiplying the position attribute by a vector of 1, 1, and some z number that's greater than 1, saving the result using the position attribute. We can see as we change the z value, we're stretching the raspberry. We also want some finer grain control and variation of the fruitlet sizes. To do this, 
create an attribute randomized node to set the scale of the attribute a value between 0.7 and 0.8. That's it, we're almost done. If you notice unusual spaces between fruitlets, try adjusting the density max value or change the seed until you get the result you're looking for. Let's say we want to create more raspberries with different shapes. We don't want to create duplicate geometry node trees and make manual changes each time. Instead, like we did with the fruitlet node setup, we can expose a few inputs to our raspberry nodes which can be used to create some differences between raspberry objects. We can start by exposing the height limit offset, fruitlet seed, and shape offset. This is the vertical stretch. Now create a few more base meshes, add the geometry node modifier with the raspberry node setup. For each raspberry we create, we can now tweak these inputs to create a slightly different berry each time. That's it! We've used geometry nodes to create a raspberry. Geometry nodes allowed us to come up with a non-destructive, highly configurable method of creating this fruit. You can scale up or down the level of detail depending on the scene you're creating. This is also something I really wanted to create and I think it looks pretty good. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching!